This Coin Week podcast is brought to you by PCGS. Don't miss out on a risk free crossover submissions with February's PCGS crossover special. Members who submit qualifying coins for crossover will not be charged for coins that do not cross into PCGS holders. Visit PCGS.com slash crossover to learn more. This week on the Coin Week podcast, we travel to Vienna, Austria to sit down with one of Europe's leading coin engravers, the Austrian Mints Helmet Andex Slinger. We discuss a range of issues from what constitutes good design, why computers haven't replaced handwork, and what he thinks of the U.S. Mint's 2017 gold coin. Uh, well, Helmut, thanks for... Uh taking your time and talking to us and, and uh, doing it not in your native language. Uh, uh, I wanted to ask you, I, I've always been a fan of your work, uh, what is the difference in your opinion between a good coin design and a bad coin design? Okay, yeah, this is a different, uh, difficult question because, yes, I just want to say, would like to say that for me a good coin uh, is mostly made by hand. So uh, I'm sure when you make a plaster model, uh, so you can put in more of your thoughts how a design should look like in a coin. Uh, and I think a good design, you see it often, uh, you have to do the work on the plaster model a few years, uh, a lot of years before, uh, before you can do a really good work. Sometimes you can do a good work just one time and then it's, it is a perfect work, work, but after then, then you do three or four times, so you see, okay, you have to do a lot of work on plaster before you can do a good design or a good coin work. Also, a good design is when uh, you work uh, on a design, you also have to think how could it look like on a coin. So you don't have just a drawing, so you have to think also from the drawing into the, into the coin. So in this connection you always have to think and then you design. And so this is a different. And I often see then I get designs from, a, yeah, from outside, from a customer, and they say we should uh, transfer this design into a coin. So uh, yeah. It's just a designer, but he didn't. He can't think how it should like so, should look like on the coin. And so, a good design is when you know how it works. Design in combination with the plaster model, and at the end with a, a, a striped coin. Obviously, in our industry, we've seen a lot of technological progress. But the something I think about, and I think it, it relates to movies a little bit, is. Um, there's a lot of computer graphics in movies mm -hmm. and characters that are made out of computer graphics. Mm -hmm. And there's a point that I don't think we've reached yet where a computer graphic person mm -hmm. can fool a person into thinking that that's real, mm -hmm. reality, right? Mm -hmm. But yet, if you go to art, the art world, 100, 200, 300 years ago, master painters mm -hmm. could make photorealistic mm -hmm. depictions of people. But computers, we can't, the same artists, incredibly skilled artists today, haven't been able to do that precisely on a computer. And when I look at coins that have been done on a computer versus coins that maybe 100 or 200 years ago were done by hand, mm -hmm. um, you, you still see that there's this, this line that we haven't crossed where we make computer-generated art that can fool a human being into thinking a human created it. Mm -hmm. why, why do you think that is? Yeah, uh, so when you work on computer, uh, you know, it's, I don't know, I think the name is Soul, you know, when you work on computer, it looks often very realistic, but uh, a good designer uh, know the parts, for example, of a portrait, there you have to do, there you have to go deeper and higher, and these are often very small details, and this is a different to computer art graphic. And uh, yeah, 
And also, I'm not sure if the technique on the computer is so perfect uh, as we can do it on, on the plaster model at the moment. Maybe in the future it's completely different. But, uh, yeah, I think a good artist knows, okay, you have to reduce here some details uh, and, uh, yeah, how can I say, uh, for me a good the difference is that design on a on, on, on computer, there isn't so much soul in it. I, I can't impress it. So you, you have a feeling, then you make the hairs and so on. So I, I asked an, an computer expert how we can do our hairs on computer, how we would like to do it. And I saw it and it's, it, yeah, it looks like chaos, but at the end, it isn't like I do it on, 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 on by hand. Yeah. Right. It's not, it's not random. It's in not a way. random. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're right. Right. And, and this, is, this is different. And I think this is, a, this is, you feel it when you see a coin and made by hand and, and made on the computer so you can see it. And you, for me, yeah, I see, okay, this is an artistic work and this other thing is, is yeah, it's, it's nice, it's a good work. But it isn't, yeah, I think there's not, you know, it doesn't look that handcrafted and, and the feeling is different. So, so if you're a coin collector, I, I recommend you pull out your coins and really look closely at them and consider this next question. Essentially, an engraver is, is basically doing sleight of hand. They're taking something that our eyes and our brains recognize and, and understand visually, and you're, you're doing it in a way that's not natural. Like a nose has a higher proximity to, your, to, the, to the viewer mm -hmm. than their ears. But on a coin, you're limited. You have to flatten it. Yeah, yeah. And, and so a shoulder will be higher than a head. Or you know, or closer to you than the head and the side profile, yeah. but the head and the and the shoulder can yeah. will have the same relief, and so you're essentially it's it's ma it's sort of like a magician's illusionary work that you're yeah, doing. Illusion is per yeah right illusion yeah, and so this is a lot of experience, you know. Then you you flatten the whole portrait, and at the end the customer says, "Wow, it looks like me," but no, it it. Nothing uh, is in a correct uh, level. Yeah, you know the, the the shoulder is much more flatter than normal, or as you said, the nose and the ears are flattened. So this is, I think, you can do it by hand much more easier than by than on computer. And so for me, this is a lot of experience. And you know, every head has not, it's not just the head, the nose, the eyes. So. Every person has his own character, right? And you, I think it's so important to find this character, and and it's for me it's easier to bring this character on the coin than I do it by hand. It mustn't be the same the nose and the the the, the lips, on the yeah you can do it perfect, but often you have to go deeper because he his his face is so so yeah so. Impressive, and then you go deeper, and and it's, it depends on the character of the of the of the person who is uh, who is uh, portrayed. And so, for me, it's when I do it by hand, I can uh, bring more uh, yeah character into the design than on computer. I do also uh, uh, computer work and also portraits on computer, but this is just for very very cheap medals. Right. Yeah, but I'm sure. I'm sure that there are um, some artists uh, who can do also very, very good work on computer. But I know this kind of artists they are also able to draw a portrait in a very good way. So they can do both. Right. Perfect. But the problem often is that we uh, have people who just can work uh, just work on computer. They are experts on computer, but they have never done a portrait by hand. Right. And so it could be very interesting to work on computer, but you have to know everything about uh, designing, you have to know everything about drawing. You do it really good work on, on paper, and you can also do it on computer. So it's just a tool at the end. So uh, when uh, 
you, you started at the Austrian Mint, you were working under Thomas Pessendorfer, yeah. and uh, you were talking about uh, how uh, the difference between good and bad design, um, and you said that you could do design for a, f a few years before you actually get good at it, but uh, how was he as a mentor, and, and when did he finally tell you you made your first good design? Uh, <laughs> uh, a long time ago. Uh, yeah, first of all, Mr. Biesendorf, he's, he's a really great guy, and uh, when he retired, uh, I said to him he should ask, support us, because you know there are a lot of people out there, someone is, is good in drawing and so on, and they support us to find new ideas, get better in drawing and so on, but uh, by doing a coin by hand on plaster, so uh, I think he's one of the best. And since that time, so sometimes when he needs some uh, ideas or, or he just look on, on a coin design or on a plaster work, so he sometimes visit us and um, supported us. So he's a really, really good guy and he supported us until now. Uh, yeah, then he said first time this is a good design. Um, I think at first this was my first coin, yeah. the uh, Johann Strauss 50, Euro, uh, 50 shilling coin. And he said, okay, the design is really good and now they have to look on the plaster model. But I think this was the first time I said, okay, this is good. So was it intimidating for you to start working in the engraving shop here when you were Determinating me. Uh, intimidating. Were the, was it uh, stressful? Were you nervous? Uh... Sure. Well, absolutely. Cool. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it. Yeah. First of all, uh, yeah, I start designing here, and I know um, when you have to work uh, on a coin. So uh, yeah, you need an invitation by the by Mr. Biesendorf, the head of the engraving department, and. I would like to do it as fast as possible to be a part of this uh, group of, of coin designers. And so I worked really hard. I, I start working at 7 o'clock in the morning and normally you can leave at 4 o'clock in the evening at uh, p.m. and after then. So I went back to the office and worked until 12, 12 o'clock in the evening and do drawing, working on computer, working on the plaster model. And I, I did it from, from, from Monday to Friday and on weekend I have my, my, my scratch book <laughs> and I think about and I would be a part of it. Right. Yeah, it was a must. It, it, and uh, yes, and, and two or three years later, so Mr. Pesendorf asked me if I would like to be mm -hmm. a part of this yeah, group. And it was amazing. And he supported me in that way. Yeah, and also my colleague Mr. Wiener, okay. he's also supporting me and telling me some tricks and, and uh, some things, how a portrait should look like, or you should uh, place it in the coin, not in the middle, and so on. And this was very important. And after then it goes on and goes on. But at the end, today, I also have my scratchbook uh, at home on my table everywhere, so uh, scratching is very important to do it by hand and also a fair, museums, when I, for my last holiday I was every second day in the museum and watch new modern art and also a traditional art and then I can combine it, it's also very interesting, then you have the modern design and also an old design and then you can mix it together or not and, and what are the special uh, uh, things on the historic design and so on. And, and this is very impressive. And, and yeah, I also work uh, with my friends of mine I'm working in an advertising agency. So advertising is also very interesting and also inspired. It's just inspiration. But at the end, you have to bring all this idea together in the design for producing a new coin. So do you, when you design a a coin, a commemorative coin. I, I, I think over the past, uh, probably the past several decades, the numismatic industry has evolved to the point where I don't know if the association with coins and money exists maybe the way it would have a hundred years ago. I think they're coins and coins sell better than metals 
and so they have a denomination and the face value, you know, and they, and they have, um, we instinctively think of it as having a value, but mm -hmm. the coins themselves don't really resemble classical money anymore. Mm -hmm. Is this something that you think about when you're designing? Or do you, are you thinking about money, that this is technically money when you sure. design it? Sure, of course. And yeah, I like very uh, modern design, but um, I think for commemorative coins, it's so important for also for the customers uh, to have, uh, they should have the feeling it's a value. Mm. And also, so our design, you know, the Austrian design isn't such a slim design. So it's more, there are a lot of things on the coin. And yeah, for me, there should be more on a coin and it should look like uh, yeah, a coin, with a, a coin, not a medal. Mm -hmm. And so we work very detailed. There are a lot of things on the coin, a lot of, of motifs on the coin. And yeah, I see often coins, they are just made on the computer. And I said before, uh, this is, uh, for me, the customers are also so important. And they should have really good product. They get a lot of coin products, mm. but they should get the best. And I think our customers know they get a really good product. And of course it's a high pressure for us because we have to supply them with a really good product product. And so it's not a pressure to just for the designing department, it's also a pressure for the dueling and the striking department. But yes, as you asked me about uh, and I think if I think about the value, it is a coin, yes of course. So um, I would say the coins that the Austrian Mint puts out from the bullion coins to the collector coins, they, they, it, it seems like an aspirational lifestyle brand. It's like uh, you, you, you get off the, the airplane at the airport and you go to the baggage claim and you see the Austrian <laughs> Mint ad and it, it doesn't, like I said, it, it seems like it's a product that is crossed out of just a small coin collecting community into being a representation mm -hmm. of like Austrian prestige. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess in some respects, like when you talk about pressure uh, and, and putting out a good product and having a good relationship with a customer, you're also in, in effect representing the best of Austrian culture. Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, the Austrian mint, so the coin product is on the same level as the artist of his, of the historic museum with a lot of art. Also the, the music, the Austrian music, Mozart and so on. And also the coin thing about the historic thing and, and, and our style. So it's on the same level for the Austrians as the mus music and, and, and uh, art. And yeah, so as you said, this is, this is on the same level and it's very important for the Austrian culture. What's the, what's more difficult to design, like uh, like a portrait of one person, a portrait of two people side by side, uh, abstract design, um, architecture? I mean, what are the what's the most difficult type of motif to design? Okay, difficult. Oh, this, this is a difficult question because uh, it's all difficult. <laughs> sometimes, so for. Uh, Difficult for me is, is um, the niobium coin, uh, especially the two-colored niobium coin, because uh, the theme is often more very complex and on also a technical a theme, and then you have to think about how how yeah the lines should look like, and also you have technical parameters, a lot of them. And then you have to, should have a nice design, and at the end you have to put it together. And so I think this is very difficult, the designing process. But, uh, yeah, for the designing. But if you, then you ask me, is it difficult to have a 
do a portrait on a, on, a, on a plaster model or the technical things. So I would say a portrait is even difficult, more difficult than, than a, a technical thing like architecture or so. I mean, is, is, it, is, is a two portrait coin like the one you're, the Maria, one of the Maria Theresa ones you're working on has two portraits side by side? Is that more difficult because the elevation that you're trying to show two people in this? I don't know. It's, it's, it's the same. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, it's more important uh, the character of, of, of the face. So you can, you, so the customers should say, uh, yes, this is Maria Theresia. Yeah. And she looks like that. This is for me the most important thing. And often it's very difficult to bring the portrait exactly, or that the portrait should, should, or that the portrait looks exactly the same as on the picture. So do you, uh, do you look at or pay attention to designs from other countries? Sure. Any, yeah. Anything you like? Yeah, the Americans, uh, as I said. So there are two countries. Uh, as I said, the, I love the American design. Uh, I often study the American design and I love uh, the style of the design. And then you look at it and into it, they are so professional. The lines of the head, the eyes, the hairs, everything is so perfect. And they make a really, really nice and, and, and perfect design. They are very professional. And the second one is are the Italian designs. They are also perfect. Very classic. Very classic uh, and also very, very professional. And I'm not often see designs which are so professional. And then you go to Google and, and look for other designs, you will see it. The Americans design is so beautiful and, and very perfect, very professional, and also the Italian designs. So you were telling me that uh, you, you, you like the uh, gold uh, high relief coin the Mint's gonna put out this year. Yeah, absolutely. And, and also the, the design is fantastic. And also the relief is very, very nice because often you have a nice design, but the re relief is sometimes awful. But uh, here you can see it's as a, this design is really nice and, and also the, the, the portrait is perfect. But yeah, as I said, the American designs and not just the designs and also the coins, you see these are prof professionals. So you don't need to go into specific answers here. I'm not asking yeah. you to say anything bad about anybody. But when you're looking at coin designs, either in pictures or at a like at the World Money Fair yeah. that we just had, do you ever look at designs and say, "Oh, there's a mistake there. I see. Oh, oh yeah, I don't. You know, I see that they took a shortcut. Out of that, you know, <laughs> do you ever see that in, in professional work? Uh, yes, I saw it. So some, yeah. Um, because yeah, when you see plaster models or, or a coin, and then, okay, oh, the, the hands are too big in, in front of uh, in, in, in relation to, to the head. Or so, but yeah, sometimes you can see it, but it's yeah. But everyone makes yeah, mistakes. <laughs> yeah, also I did, and, and sometimes you see a design and you think it's perfect, and after then. Five, six days later, you watched once again on the, on the blast and said, okay, well, you have to do it better. And then you have to change it. Yes. But then you haven't got this, the time to do the changes. So, yes. Well, what design of yours did you struggle with the most that you just really just couldn't be uh, satisfied with? Uh, I have to think about it. There is a design. Mm. Yes, I'm, I'm, this is interesting. I'm not so happy with uh, the design of the, uh, I think this was the Südbahn. Südbahn, it was a 20 euro coin, but it was, it, it gets a prize in Germany for the best silver coin from abroad, yes. Right. But for me, uh, but not, the work isn't so bad, but I think uh, I did a drawing that all the details have the same size and there is no high, a bigger thing in it. So no scale. No, yeah, scale. no scale. And, and for me it isn't uh, very good work. So I'm sure that uh, I can do it better. But this is interesting. It's a learning. It's a learning. Then you see it and they say, oh yeah, it's not my best work. I can do it better. 
So next time you put more energy once again and you know, okay, like in this, this way, you never do it once again. It's a learning. So, uh, and I don't know if this was the case. Uh, uh, so uh, last year's Naomi Umcoin was time. That's very abstract. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> very, very, and, and you ever get a situation where you're, you're asked to make something that has such an abstract, open meaning, and then you sit there and you're like, how am I going to do this? Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is, different. It is difficult. Yeah? So, so like the traditional thing, it's sometimes it's easier because, you know, it, it's hard enough to, to bring a painting or your thoughts in a round design or a coin that this is 30 millimeters in, in diameter but more difficult is then you have to reduce it and reduce it and reduce it and at the end it should look like okay it's, that's it perfect yeah and you wouldn't like to change anything and uh, so yes this is this is um, for me the hardest way to design a coin yeah. Yeah, because I, I would hope that people who collect that series realize that you've gone a, they've, that you've gone a long way from when they were asking you to do the, the television pattern yeah. or the Simmerling Railway or something to now it's like allegory. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I hope they like it. <laughs> yeah, but you know, uh, so we, are, we have a lot of themes. We have a lot of themes and, and I think... Uh, and we are just four engravers, and so you have to be able to to do the whole range of, of designs from modern to old design, and also to the yeah. so the whole range of different styles. So this is now our part. What part of Austrian culture that hasn't been done yet on a coin would you most like to see or take on yourself? Uh, you from our culture? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they did the Roman. Yeah. So you haven't done have food. Been, uh, pardon? You haven't done food yet. <laughs> food. <laughs> <laughs> so you, food is also very important. So music, okay, the uh, music. Uh, yeah, maybe the youth culture is would be also very interesting because youth people are also very interesting in the culture. It could be a nice series to talk about that because maybe also for younger collectors. So it would be also interesting, yeah. You haven't done a Falco coin. Yeah, and you know, <laughs> think about it, but yeah, at the moment, no, we didn't. But it would be good, but it would be a good idea, yes. Yeah, you know, Vienna calling, you have yeah. everything. Yeah. You know Falco? Oh, well, yeah. Yes, sure. Kineshe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I liked, uh, you know, uh, Jenny and uh, all yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, no, that's great. Um, so, uh, let's see. You know, one more question to wrap it up. Um, so, w what... What do you like most about what you do? Most. Yeah. Uh, most, it depends. So, when I design a coin and I design more coins in a row, so I prefer working on plaster. And at the end, yes, I have to say, working on plaster is, for, yeah, I like it most from the whole designing and, 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 and modeling process. Because, you know, when I listen my classical music and I sit on my table, look out to the Vienna Stadtpark and then uh, in front of me the plaster model and I put on the light and then I work, so I'm in a completely different world than here. And then, you know, and at five o'clock in the evening it's the best time because no telephone rings, you are just for your own listen to your music, sit in front of your plaster model, have a lot of pictures around you and you you fall in your work. And this is a moment, this is fantastic and often you you think it's now you finish and you take a look and it's ten o'clock in the in the evening. You know, this is and the times goes on and goes on. And this is like a meditation. Mm -hmm. 
and when you go home it doesn't feel like you had done a lot of work so it's more yeah it's, it's a flow do you, do you ever think that your coins would be collected all over the entire world when you start no I said no but, but <laughs> When I met you on the fair, yeah, before I, I, I walk around, and then I I was as a as a, a customer, and he had a lot of coins on his booth, and I said, okay, this is my coin, this is my coin, and then you you think about it, wow, the coins are sent around the world, this is amazing, so this is this is great. Yeah, I, if I, if I was an engraver, I would be the I would. When I was buying something, I would tell the cashier, "Oh yeah, I designed that." And they yeah. would, and they, and, they, and they would say, "Sure, you did." Yeah. <laughs> no, this is different. <laughs> no, normally no. So yeah. So I'm, I'm not so 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 proud of my work. I don't know why. So. I would like to do the best, and the next work should be better. This is my my my. There is my energy I spend in, and yes, and this is my focus, and yeah. And this is for me very important to 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 do the best I can for my work into the design and bring it into the plaster model. That's it, and yeah. And yeah, it's it's not always very uh, so smooth. Sometimes it's a big pressure yeah, to do it better and better. But uh, at the end, uh, yeah, you see. Then you 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 uh, put all the coins together. You see, okay, you are getting better and better, and it's good to have a little bit of pressure and, and also. Uh, you see also you get older and older and you have more impressions and more impressions and so you, yeah, it's a flow also in the design so it's something change and you see you have another style and so you work a little bit different than two years ago, than three years ago and for me this is very interesting because you see it. You see the growth. You, you, yeah. Yeah. Because you can, like a painter, you can do all the pictures next together and, and you see, okay, I started here and now I'm here. And you see how his life is, uh, and his style is changing. I mean, is that a conscious thing? Do you, do you consciously say, okay, at this point I'm going to define my style differently? Or is it just something that no. kind of am a spectrum? It's a spectrum. Not here. But then I see, okay, this is a cool idea, this is nice, and I put it in the net, and then, and ten years later, I wouldn't like to do it anymore. And, but it's interesting for me to see, okay, I like this line, I like this style, I like this text, and I like this kind of, of design. And a few years later, okay, this is, this was the, yeah, 2010, now they have 2017. Yeah, this is a stock idea. Just, yeah. yeah. And it's interesting when you go to a museum and you see also painters, you start uh, on, on maybe the design, but the, the painting is very crowded. Hmm. And at the end, so it's just a line. Yeah. Yeah. But because I can get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, 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 thanks very much for, for talking to me. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please share it with your friends. And please leave us a five-star review on the iTunes store. You can download every episode of the Coin Week podcast for free on iTunes. For Coin Week, I'm editor Charles Morgan signing off. Happy collecting.